Let's be honest, we are all a mess. And that is the common ground that we must come together and pick each other up. Harriman School Community. To our parents, teachers, the teenagers, administration, to the whole community. Hey my friends, my name is Jeff Yalden. This video is for you. I'm a teen mental health, teen suicide prevention and crisis intervention expert and youth motivational speaker. 25 years I've worked in the trenches of the hardest hit communities, stopping suicide contagions, preventing suicides, and bringing hope to communities that have lost all hope. I answer the hardest questions the parents and teens want to know. I bring communities together to move forward. And so now I'm reaching out because several people in your community have reached out to me. First and foremost, I'd like to offer my most sincere condolences to the families, to the friends, to the school staff, to the whole community, and to the state of Utah affected by what is going on in the Harriman community. I want to be sensitive. And I ask you to understand that my intentions are pure. It's never easy to reach out like this being from the outside. But at this point, my friends, you need an outsider that knows and understands teenagers and how teens are living and the emotions, the stress, the anxieties that they're feeling 24-7, 365. You need an outsider. And my friends, I know that nobody has my experience. So to all of you, let me start off with, I'm sorry, I'm truly sorry, and my thoughts and prayers, my heart is with each and every one of you. Words can adequately describe the pain that I feel in my heart when I hear the death of a young person, or in your case, the many losses that your community has felt over the past year. I can tell you now, you might not be done. But you have to do something, and I think you have to do something immediately for your teens, your, your staff, for the community. But please know that it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay, but you need to do the work that I'm about to talk about. There's so much involved here, and there are too many people wanting to get involved, and this potentially could have an adverse effect on the community's success. I get it, though. Now, I appreciate it. I understand your pain. I understand where people are coming from and everybody wants to help. I love it. But I know that today's youth don't care about research. They don't care about statistics, suits and ties. And they certainly don't want crisis intervention people sitting in the library saying, we're here if, if you want to come and talk. <laughs> really, it's the last thing they want. I'll tell you, teenagers want two questions answered. Two questions, and these two questions need to be answered first and foremost by parents and trusted adults every day. You know the most trusted adult in any teen's life is that same-sex parent? That's right. But I'll tell you why teens aren't reaching out to their parents. They describe their parents in two words. They're tired and angry. So why would they want to reach out to the parents? And then they're afraid to ask for help or talk because they think that you don't get it and, and that you're not validating their feelings and their emotions. They think that you're going to try and fix their problems or tell them how they should feel. They don't want to be fixed and you don't fix kids, you fix cats and dogs. They want to be validated that what they're thinking and feeling is normal. That this growing up and understanding is on their terms and today's teens are growing up differently than we did as parents. Watch my TEDx video and you'll understand what I'm talking about. You see, my friends, suicide today is 90% mental illness. That coping skills, problem solving skills, interacting, communicating, social interaction, the expectations, the pressures, a feeling of I'm alone and I'm a burden also adds to this pressure. It's a habituation to physiological pain and fearsome experiences to repeated exposure to painful and provocative events that gives that wanting 
to that desire for suicide. I'm, I'm going to make that a little bit more understandable. My friends, teens don't want to die, but they live in the here and the now, though, and they see the solutions to their problems so far out there that they can't solve in the now. So the pain of I'm alone and I'm a burden carries on day after day, week after week, and then they get discouraged with never being happy. This is a form of depression called dysthymia. And if they feel that they can never be happy, well, then that gives them that desire for suicide. Teens need relationships. They need trusted adults that are patient, that listen, give them time, understanding, love, unconditional love, and support them and validate that what they feel and that these feelings that they're feeling are normal. Then we have to give them or teach them coping skills and problem-solving skills. I think we also need to teach them or make sure they understand balance and boundaries with smartphones, social media, YouTube, and the internet. I could talk all day about this, but what I want you to concern yourself with is a couple very simple things. Dopamine effect, social media depression, and the effect this is having on teen mental health today. Yes, your teens. Again, please watch my TEDx video and you'll understand. This is very serious, my friends, and teens don't have the maturity today. Scientifically proven, their frontal lobe isn't fully matured to handle the emotions that come with the smartphones and the social media platforms, Snapface, Insta, group texting, YouTube, on and on and on. Now, please understand, I'm not saying smartphones are bad, nor am I saying social media and the internet is bad but we're not using it responsibly and for the reasons that we should be using what technology has given and benefited all of us, it simply harms mental health and has taken us away from social interaction, which gives us self-esteem, problem-solving skills, we coping skills, communicating skills. That makes sense. Folks, these are life skills so important to the growth of our children. Where does this come from? Listen, I think cell phones and social media, internet pressures, colleges, grades, friends, and so much more play a significant role day to day, just adding up to more and more pressure to handle. Again, I want to repeat, I know the teens don't want to die. But I do know that suicide ends up being where they think the solution is too far out there that the individual doesn't see a solution to their problems in the now, in the here, that they think they'll never be able to solve their problems and move on. Everything is in the here and the now. For them, for us, text, think about it. You send a text, you immediately get a response. Social media, you get, you're in the here and now, you know what's going on with everybody. You go to an ATM and automatically cash comes out. You call mom, mom picks up. We have snap face and Instagram where you immediately get likes and if you don't get enough, you take the picture down because all of a sudden you think you're not as funny as other people, you're not as cute, or your life is inadequate when comparing your life to someone else's. Friends, I'm going to say it again, life isn't in the right now. Life also isn't a race, it's a journey. And so I think it's important that we teach our children about patience in the process of going after our goals and dreams. But what about college? What about college? Do you think perhaps that we're giving these kids this false sense of success when we tell them, go to college, go to college, or go here and get this degree, and boom, success. What if they're not ready? Or your plan for them isn't their plan for themselves. The expectations are so great. And when they're not met, they're left to be disappointed, and they never want to disappoint you. Parents, family, friends, teachers, coaches, even themselves. Listen, I'm pro-education, but I'll tell you something. Our children are growing up later than they did 15, 20, 30 years ago. And they have access to so much that it's frightening, and they're not emotionally capable of handling I mean, years ago, 18 years old, and they're ready. Today, that 18 is turned into 24, where they're starting to mature, but the expectations of growing up, go to college and get a job, is still there. 
but now it's there leaving them scared that they're supposed to have it figured out. And they don't. And we have to let them know that it's okay. While someone might have this little idea of what they want to do, who they want to be, and another team doesn't, that doesn't make them less of a person or it doesn't mean that they're not going to be as successful as other people. I mean, our youth see it. You, you graduate from college, you have $200,000 in debt, and all of a sudden it's like, well, I don't know what I want to do, or I can't get to find a job working in the field or the major that I got, and they end up doing something else. And then they say that our teens, they can have over eight different careers in a lifetime. So, yep, but go, go to college, go to college, go to college. The stress, the pressure, you graduate, you have all this debt, 24 years old, you move home, and then you sleep in your parents' basement watching TV to the late hours of the night or gaming or you're on social media, you're sleeping on a beanbag chair, eating Doritos, naked, watching blah, 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 contemplating why things aren't working out. Our young people are not ready to be adulting and figuring this out at 18 years old. Folks, this is my work. It's never easy to hear about a suicide or listening to a young person and the pain they're having in their hearts with their life, the situations, circumstances, challenges, expectations, obstacles, so much more. The pressure. Like you're expected to have it all figured out. Really? My friends, ask any trusted adult in your life what their plan was at 17, 22 years old. I want to be very careful in the words I use and how I say what I want to say. Please understand again, my intentions are pure. My heart hurts for you. Not one person in your community around the country isn't emotionally caught up, affected by what is going on in Harriman. Folks, I was once there myself. I understand. And after a suicide or multiple like you are dealing with, we're left asking a young person with so much to live for, makes a forever decision to end their own life by suicide. Why? How? How does one get so hopeless to feel that suicide is the only option? My friends, our system is broken. It's flawed. Our youth are growing up in a broken system in America, and America has a responsibility. But I also think we have a bigger responsibility than just waiting for America to do something. A responsibility to ask better questions, not why me or why our community or why this or why that. It's how. It's how can I. You see, I think you need to ask better questions, self-esteem. Get to know who you are, my friends, and be comfortable with who you're not. The most important thing in your life right now is your self-esteem. And I'm going to tell you right now, value yourself. We need to teach value to our children and support them where they are and where they are feeling. Folks, this is real to them. And if it's real to them, you got to make it real to you. Young people, let me tell you something. I love you. But I'm going to tell you something that you need to hear. You might not want to hear it, but you need to hear what I'm about to say. Make good choices. Attitude, it's a little thing that makes a big difference. I want you to be confident, not arrogant. I want you to be confident. You know what else I want you to do? I want you to just breathe. Just breathe. Don't be afraid to ask for help when you need it. Slow down. Relax. It's going to be okay, I promise. I need you all to know that you have trusted adults in your life. And I ask you, and I want you to answer this question, who is that trusted adult in your life? Answer that question. Another thing, my friends, life doesn't happen fast like you're used to. You send a text, immediate response, phone call, someone's there. Again, ATM, cash comes out. Social media, I get likes. <laughs> Listen, we're all growing up in a superficial world and it's having its way with us and especially with young people. But adults too. 
The difference is adults, for the most part, have learned how to cope and process their pain and their issues. I say that with a chuckle because I know many adults that don't. But folks, you can't let this affect you. Balance and boundaries. Turn your phone off. Take a time out. Now, I'm going to tell you three things that I think is really important to our teens today. And parents, you need to enforce this every single day. Every day. Number one, our young people need sleep. Sleep, eight hours, eight hours a night, uninterrupted, eight hours of sleep. And if your kid is ugly, they need more. Now, I'm not saying your kid's ugly, but maybe your kid has an ugly attitude. I'm not sure, but I'm just saying they need eight hours of sleep. Nutrition. Our young people consume over 200 grams more sugar a day in a 24-hour period than they should be consuming. You know who hangs out? Depression. And sugar, they're like best friends. So less food juice, less soda, less processed foods, and start working on your overall nutrition. Get involved, social interaction. The more socially interactive you are with family, with people, with friends, with your teachers, with your coaches, less cell phone, more interaction. Again, self-esteem, problem-solving skills, coping skills. You work things out, communicating. My friends, sleep, nutrition, and social interaction. Get involved. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm, I'm sorry, my friends. This hurts my heart. I'm passionate about it. Listen, again, I don't think young people want to die as much as I see young people having a problem and not seeing a solution and being able to move on. That's the point where they think that Suicide is their only option. Suicide is the most preventable kind of death. Suicide is a permanent action to a temporary situation. Let me tell you about my theory on teen suicide. A person feels that they are a burden to others, meaning that they don't make any notable contributions to the world, or they feel that they're a liability and they're disappointing someone. That could be family, friends, their parents, workers, teachers, coaches. Or a person feels that they're alone, meaning they don't have any meaningful relationships. If this pain in their heart lasts long enough, they start to have this desire to want to end their life. I'm alone. I'm a burden. Then it's a desire because the pain goes on and on every single day. But folks, this is life. It's not easy. It's not fair. It never will be fair. But we learn and grow every day. That's life. That's where self-esteem comes from. Wake up every day, brush your teeth, wash your face, do your dance. And when you walk out that door, three things matter. Behavior, attitude, and choices. I promise you, on the other side of battling fear and life situations is self-esteem. You go over the mountain, you look back and say, yeah, I did that. And don't let anyone take that from you. But you got to do the work, though. You got to do the work. Wake up, get up, dress up, show up, wash your face, brush your teeth, do your dance, and behavior, attitude, choices every day. That's what matters. But you're not a victim. And I'll tell you something. Mental illness and depression is at 90% of suicides. 90% of suicides are preceded by clues that we didn't notice. And why should we notice when we're not looking for it? Listen, the individuals that are on a school's radar aren't necessarily the ones that we need to look out for. Today, it's a lot of school communities saying to me, Jeff, we didn't even know there was a problem. There were no signs. This is the last person that we would have suspected. And I know. Parents, do not be ashamed to let the school know that your child is in therapy or on medication or seeing someone for this or for that. Do not be ashamed. And I think community, do not shame people that want to seek therapy to better themselves. You don't shame first responders. We, we need people supporting each other. 
Mental illness shouldn't be labeled and have a stigma that goes with it. Mental illness, or I should say the mentally strong, are the ones that aren't afraid to ask for help. Let me repeat that. The mentally strong, they ain't afraid to ask for help. And so what we can all do better is saying, I'm proud of you for asking for help. The best thing I've ever done for myself being a man that lives with mental illness is ask for help and I continue to seek help and I practice self-care every day as a priority. I practice self-care every single day. As a man that lives with mental illness, I'm diagnosed with major depression, bipolar type 2, and post-traumatic stress, PTSD. And I've come to learn that self-care and accepting it is why I am the healthiest I've ever been. I care about you all. I'm praying for you and sending my most sincere thoughts of health, happiness, and grace that we all come together. And I also want to make sure that we don't have any copycats. And so having said that, I want to address blaming and pointing fingers. This isn't the time, nor is it the right thing to do. We're all emotionally charged. And in the process of grieving, we are angry and emotional. Understandably so. But again, let's look within ourselves and ask, how can I be the most effective person, whether I'm a parent, a teacher, administrator, counselors, teens? What is my best efforts to help and not hurt anyone or the situation that we are all facing? I hear all too often, you know, the school should do this and the school should do that. The school has to do something. Why aren't they doing something? Folks, ain't no school administrator ever given a certificate on how to handle a suicide. And every suicide is different. Not, not that this is right or wrong, but every suicide is different and affects the school community differently. And then when you have multiple Listen, our administration, they're human. And they're doing the best they can with what they have. And they know teens are not speaking up and asking for help. A school administrator has two responsibilities. I tell them, you've got two responsibilities. Number one, you protect your students. Number two, you protect your staff and your teachers. Everyone is in pain. And the school administrator has to concern themselves, well, if we do something, are we going to trigger more emotions that in the 13-day window, something else can happen? I'll tell you, the best thing that an administration can do is to not react, but to respond appropriately. The best thing that they can do is, is just respond appropriately on their terms, when it's right, taking care of their teachers and their kids. And the best thing that we can do is show our support. You might not like it, but it's not our place to like it or not like it. We all need to step back and look at the big picture objectively. Folks, this is all of our issue. We all need to do better. Parenting, teaching, coaching, listening, being present, being engaged, teens asking for help, everyone loving more, judging less, forgiving others, and forgiving ourselves too. The copycats. Oftentimes, a suicide can trigger strong suicidal ideation amongst others. You don't even need to know who the person was that may have taken their life. This is always a concern. We want to cut that off quickly. It's okay to ask for help. In these situations, again, the 13-day window, we have to be careful because more and more people are at risk during this time. Each event you hold in your community brings back these emotions and starts this 13-day window all over again. So, listen, I, people want to reach out. But who is helping? What do they know about teens and teen mental health? What is their message? Do they know teens? Do they know suicide prevention, teen suicide prevention? Do they know the signs and the symptoms, myths and facts, clues and warning signs, how to teach it? Do they know how to ask the teenager the suicide question and what to do if the red flags are present? I need you to be careful. Be very careful. Your heart is in the right place. I love it, but you could be doing more harm than good. Please be careful. I pray that you're careful. 
students, you have a great responsibility too. I'm going to tell you right now. You see something, you say something. You know something, do something. And if you know that one of your friends is hurting, you have a responsibility to go to a trusted adult or to go to a mental health professional. And if you go to a trusted adult, they have a responsibility too to take this to that mental health professional. You, you, ha you are not going against your friends. You're not ruining the trust. Do the right thing. I trust in you. You know the right thing. And you're going to do the right thing because you care about your friend. It's okay to ask for help, my friends. It's okay to ask for help. What you might be feeling today doesn't mean that it's your future. I'm going to tell you, it gets better. Life gets better. Today is temporary. You will grow from what you're going through. The situations, the struggles in life, the challenges, the breakups. My friends, I'll tell you something. I've learned this doesn't happen to us. But everything we go through happens for us. Because everything we experience in life shapes us and conditions us. You don't realize that when you live in the here and the now. But life isn't in the here and the now. And so everything teaches us. We grow through life's challenges and tough times. And we all have them. We all have a story. We all have failures and setbacks. Life shapes us every day. That is what is so beautiful about life. It teaches us. And so the responsibility is simple. If we are going to have internet and cell phones and social media platforms, smartphones, then our government needs to provide the adequate care for what this brings. Simply put, we're giving our young people rights and privileges that they're not emotionally capable of handling. And the consequences that this brings without even knowing it leads to so many things, my friends mental health issues, social media depression, depression, sadness, self-harm. And in many cases, all this leads to suicide today. You're not gonna like what I gotta say, but this is a parenting issue. And parenting today is greater. The challenge, the responsibility than it's ever have been. But it's also society's issue and how we deal with this and move forward. But more importantly, I need you all to say, this is my responsibility. It's a personal responsibility to be your best advocate. Parents, we need to be the best advocate for our children and their well-being and teach our children to advocate for themselves too. That it's okay to ask for help. That's self-esteem. You don't have to have answers to what you're going to do in life right now. You don't need to compare yourself to your friends. You don't need to think about your significance in the world or, or think about what your legacy is going to be. Excuse me. We need to teach and learn coping skills and problem solving skills. We need to learn self-esteem and valuing who we are. I think education as a whole needs to change. We need to focus more on social and emotional learning. I'm pro-education, but I'm going to tell you right now, I see flaws in the system. And things need to change. But change also needs to happen first in the home. And I'm going to tell you something else. You write this down. Nothing changes if nothing changes. So this is on us. Me, you, we are graduating young people without them being prepared to jump into the world of uncertainty, struggles in the unknown, yet our expectations continue to bring great disappointment and then our kids think that they're a burden and that they're alone in this world because they haven't figured it out yet. Figured out what? It's everyday lessons and tough times that teach us incredible lessons. That's why these trusted adults in your life, the wisdom, the experience that they have, love these people, go to them. But grind through it, my friends. It will be okay. 
We need to give our youth the tools to be successful in life. And in the meantime, I get it. We need adequate mental health care and counseling. And more importantly, we need more people talking about it. So get comfortable being uncomfortable talking about mental health. Because the more we talk about it, the greater difference that we can make in our communities. Get comfortable talking about it, my friends. We need more involved parents. We need more parents being held accountable. And we need young people to open up and talk. Folks, we can't help if we don't know. It's not a weakness to ask for help. How can people help you if you aren't asking for help? We don't know that. And if we don't know, we can't help. I want to tell you about a 16-year-old girl I met. She had a failed suicide attempt. I was speaking at the school, and after, she says to her counselor, I want to talk to him. I sat down with the young lady. I says, why didn't you ask for help? She said, nobody asked me. Nobody asked me because nobody knew. Folks, I'm in counseling myself, and yet I counsel thousands of people every month. I know who I am and why I'm in counseling, and I know why I'm taking medication. You see, I look in the mirror, and I like what I see. Hasn't always been that way, though. <laughs> you feel me? You understand, huh? That reflection looks back is not always very favorable or positive. Let me tell you something. If you look in the mirror and you don't like the reflection that looks back, don't blame it on the mirror. Take responsibility. Ask better questions. Spend more time in the mirror being comfortable, being uncomfortable. You'll start figuring it out. The mirror is the best place where you can grow. Be more concerned with who you are as a person rather than how you look. And I promise you, when you look in the mirror, you take care of this, who you are, how you look. That takes care of itself. Life will change. Take care of this, not this. Listen. My friends, our youth ask two questions, and whether you are a teacher, administrator, a coach, a parent, a trusted adult, youth pastor, anyone, we need to answer these two questions. Here they are. Number one, can I trust you? Number two, do you care about me? These two questions are the cornerstone of every trusted relationship, and we all need to do a better job. Education, our government, our schools, parenting, families, sporting events, sports. We all need to do a better job. But most importantly, you, me, take responsibility. Be your own best advocate. I can't emphasize enough, my friends. It's going to be okay. And it's okay to ask for help. And as I close, I'd like to offer some suggestions as you all move forward. I'd like to invite you to open your heart today and forever and to know that you have trusted adults always wanting to be there to help you answer life's toughest questions. And don't ever be afraid to ask for help. And remember, you matter. Don't ever think that you're alone. Don't ever feel it's your burden to your family, to your friends, to your school, to your teachers, coaches. Don't ever think that you're a burden to society because you are not. And a quick message to all of our teachers and staff. Thank you. You touch hearts and change lives. Remember, you make a difference every single day. You're valued and appreciated. Folks, there's so many questions, and in many cases, there's so few answers. We are all responsible. We need to move forward together, and we need to move forward for what's best for our young people. This is a very sad time, a time that affects us all, a time where we're all growing, and this will shape us, yet we don't understand that right now. But you're not a victim. 
I want this video to, you're a victor. It's not your fault, but you have a responsibility. Behavior, attitude, and choices. Choose to be better. Choose to grow. Choose trusted adults. Choose life. Choose love. Choose you. I'll tell you what you're dealing with is going to do one of two things. It's either going to expose wounds or it's going to build muscle. It's your choice how you respond. Allow yourself to grieve on your terms. I'm sorry, my friends, I wish I could say more. Suicide and mental health is the greatest health care crisis of our time, and we need you. We need you all to speak up. I love you, my friends. I'm sorry for your losses. Stay beautiful. I'm thinking of you all. And I know the community is looking at ways to bring me out there. And I've already said to them I would only come out if there weren't other speakers speaking because I don't know them, I don't know their message, I don't know their experience, and I don't want to be part of picking up more pieces because of what someone else may have said. If I'm to come out there, it'd be for at least two or three days in the school building with teens, teachers, working with the counselors, meeting with individuals and groups, meeting with parents, meeting with the community, watching the kids play sports and the events, Folks, I'm praying for you all. Again, my name is Jeff Yalden. My website is jeffyalden.com. And on social media, I'm at Jeff Yalden. I love you. I'm praying for you. It's going to be okay.